Hey everyone, welcome to another video and in this video we are going to talk about education loans. So I have been working on this series for a while and I've been pitching it on our Discord server. If you haven't checked it out, there's already 3000 people. There's a lot of discussion happening on that Discord server. Go check it out. It's in linked in the description. So let's call that series Edu Loans 101. Almost sounds like a course, but it almost feels like course as well because there's so much information which I have put together and I'm going to walk you through all of this today. In this whole Edu Loans 101 series, you will understand what kind of loan options you have, uh, what you need to be careful about, what some mistakes people have done before and you can avoid it and mistakes I have done as well and I could have avoided that as well. I was in the same place as you guys are four years ago. I was intimidated. My father was really helpful in the whole process and that's why I got through it. Let's talk about Prodigy Finance in this video. Let's start with them, the first one. Uh, I want to give you a little disclaimer. I have worked with them before. I did all the India meetups in collaboration with them, but I want to ensure you that this video is completely unbiased and I'm going to talk about everything, the pros, the cons, uh, the US dollar INR conversion and I have an Excel sheet which is going to break it apart for you uh, so that you can understand it better. So this video we are going to break it apart into seven parts. We are going to talk a little bit about Prodigy Finance, what they are, where they are coming from and etc. Second part would be are you eligible for loans or not? Third part would be the numbers, interest rate, loan terms and the amount of loan they give. Fourth part would be pros and cons. Uh, of taking a loan from international lender. Fifth will be international lender versus nationalized bank. Sixth will be how to apply and seventh will be a summary. At any moment of time, if you have to jump through the timestamps, I'm going to leave that in the description and in the comment section below so that you can jump through this video. Let's just get started. Let's talk about Prodigy Finance. Prodigy Finance was founded by Cameron Stevens in 2007. He was going to INSEAD, which is a really, really high-ranked university in Europe, and he was planning to do his MBA there. He had some troubles, you know, funding his education, and he realized that there is a huge problem where all these providers or lenders uh, require collateral or a co-signer. And not all students have that kind of facility, but that shouldn't stop people from studying abroad. And that's how Prodigy Finance was born. After providing billion dollars in loan and funding over 20,000 students, Prodigy is a household name. So they fund thousands of courses over 800 schools across the world. Let's come to the question. Are you eligible for the loan? If you're a student who's going to abroad, yes, you're eligible. What you need to check is you have to go to their website. I'm going to leave the link in the description. You have to go to their website and check out if they fund your schools or not. They fund over 800 universities. Most of the students who might be watching this video, uh, you guys are already eligible for the loan, but I would still recommend go check. The process is really quick. I'm jumping ahead of my curve here, but the process of getting a quote from them on how much percentage or how much uh, APR you're going to get is really quick. It's like five, six minutes process. So you can go and check that out. Let's talk about the numbers. How much loan can they provide you? The interest rate. What's the tenure period? How much is the administration fee? So first, let's talk about how much loan they can provide. So Prodigy Finance can fund up for 100% of your cost of attendance. I know a lot of banks has a condition called margin money. What do I mean by cost of attendance and margin money? Let me explain that. Cost of attendance is your full, full structure of how much money you can spend in a year. Uh, that into two is your cost of attendance. So whatever the amount is shown on your I-20, that includes your fees, that includes your books, that includes your living expenses for a one year, that in, in multiplied by, you know, if your course is two years or if your course is one year, then that's the amount which is called your cost of attendance. And Prodigy Finance can fund 100% of your cost of attendance. One thing is they do not provide loans smaller than $15,000. So you will have to take a $15,000 plus $15,000 and plus amount. But of course, you can always choose to disburse less loan amount later on when you are at the university and you decide that, okay, I do not want $15,000 or I don't want $20,000. I want lesser than the money. So you disperse lesser amount of money, but you can get qualified for $15,000 plus dollars of loan amount. Second comes the interest rates. That's the biggest catch. You know, that's how people compare loans like, hey, I'm getting 
8.9% at Prodigy Finance, whereas I'm getting 9.5% in SBI, whereas I'm getting 11.5% at HDFC Credila. What do I choose? Usually, you shouldn't just compare your loans by that one metric. There are a bunch of quantitative factors, and we are going to break that apart here. So, to get, uh, you know, Prodigy Finance's website says they give a interest rate of 4.5% to 11%. Their interest rate is a combination of fixed margin plus LIBOR rate. So for people who do not know what LIBOR is, LIBOR is, stands for the London Interbank Offered Rate. It's a benchmark interest rate at which major global banks lend to one another in the international interbank market for short-term loans. So LIBOR can vary every three months and that's what Prodigy goes from. So let's say you get an interest rate from them 8.5% and LIBOR for the three months you are getting the quote from is 0.2%. So your total APR would be 8.9% or 8.7%, 8.5 to 0.2%. One thing which I did was like, hey, how much interest rate would somebody I know would get? So my sister is also planning to come to the US fall of 21 and she is in the process of applying to loans and everything. So she went to the website applied for a loan, put her cost of attendance, put her program and got a quote within five minutes. And this is, these are the numbers which you're seeing on the website right now. Let's talk about 10 year period and how much time can you pay back your loan? So Prodigy offers seven, 10 and 15 years. And of course, the quicker you pay your loan, the better it is. The lesser interest accrued, the lesser amount you pay on your loans. Let's talk about the administration fee. So Prodigy Finance charges a 5% flat administration fee. Now that 5% you don't have to pay upfront. It has it'll be divided among your loan term. Let's say you take a $15,000 loan amount. So 5% of 15,000 is $750. Now that 750 will be divided among that whole loan period so uh, you'll not have to pay that admin fees right away but it will it will be divided into your loan and you will be paying it back once you're graduated let's talk about pros and cons i've talked about the numbers i've introduced you to prodigy finance but what are the cons and what are the pros of pf why should we even consider it i think the biggest pro which is there is you don't need a collateral or a cosigner for a student who's you know who want to study abroad and maybe he doesn't have a really sound financial background this is such a boon having a no collateral no cosigner just like just relieves you of so much stress you know you don't you are qualified enough that you know that you'll be able to pay your loan back so why don't you need a cosigner at the first place all of the other banks or all of the private entities which you'll see in India, Bank of Baroda, State Bank of India, Punjab National Bank, HDFC Credila, ICICI, all these entities require a co-signer at least. Even if they don't require a collateral, they require a co-signer at least. And Prodigy Finance came in and they're like, hey, we don't need a co-signer. We trust these students. They're going to the top universities in the US. They are going to get a great education they're going to get a great job and that's how they'll pay, pay back their loan and that's why they believe in it and a co-signer a collateral I, I just can't emphasize more on that pro the code process is really quick you know all the other banks and all the other entities the process of getting even the initial percentage on how much interest rate you're going to get is a long process they ask for your kyc they ask for your documents passport admissions letter blah 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 blah. agents are calling you that process is out of the question you go to their website you get a loan code and then they'll match you with funding and you're good to go so the process is much quicker than other parties number three you can get a loan letter without getting tied up for example, let's say you, I have taken a loan from SBI, you know, SBI charges like a 1% or a 0.5% processing fee. So in my, in the case of mine, it was like around 35,000 or 40,000 rupees. Let's say I decided that I don't want to go to studying abroad. I have my approval letter for the loan and I have already paid 40,000 rupees. Now, if I decide I don't want to go to the US, my 40,000 rupees is already lost. I can't do anything about it. With Prodigy Finance, since your admin fees is distributed among your loan term, you're not signing your approved loan letter. Uh, 
you're only signing it after you come to the US, you're not tied to that loan. Hence, you're not losing any money by getting a loan offer from them or a, getting an approved loan letter from them. Fourth, which is a big one, you don't pay for forex conversion in all the banks which you if you take a if you take a loan in indian rupees you're losing money when you're doing forex conversion so you're converting money from indian rupees to us dollar you're paying conversion on that you're paying money inbound fees in your us bank account so you're paying let's say 15 20 dollars depending on which bank you go for uh, you're saving money there and when you're paying your loan back you're also transferring your money into an Indian account. So you're losing some money in that foreign foreign exchange conversion or forex conversion as well. And number fifth, I think it's true for most of the banks, but no early repayment penalties. So let's talk about the cons here. There's no tax rebate. So what I mean by tax rebate is there, there is tax rebate when you're paying back your loan because you're paying back your loan in US dollars. And I need to confirm this. Don't quote me on that. If you're paying back your loan in US dollars, you get like a $2,500 tax rebate every year. I looked it up. I all, I'm also going through this process right now, filing taxes and everything. So I'm not 100% sure. But what I mean by tax rebate here is that you do not get any tax rebate in India. So what happened is like my father was paying some of the interest while I was still going to Purdue. That way he was getting that money tax free and he saved some money in that and also SBI gave us 0.5% off, which was a good thing. You don't get that tax rebate uh, when you're going for Prodigy Finance. Second thing, which is, which is one of the major con with uh, US dollar Indian rupees conversion loan or US taking a loan in US dollars that you're going to pay in US dollar. And since US dollar is almost always stronger than Indian rupees, you're losing some money in there. But that con, if you're paying back your loan quicker, I've done the numbers and since Prodigy is providing a lesser interest rate, that con is not really a con. Let me, let me show you here. So my father helped me in this uh, putting together a, a, this Excel sheet. So thanks to him, you know, I put together Excel sheet, but I was not as as good or as detailed. So what he did was he put like year from year 2015 to 2021. So let's say you take a $40,000 loan amount in 2015. When you start your college, you're taking a loan amount in 64.13. And what I've done is I've taken an average US dollar to INR. I'm not going to go in detail with this sheet I because I want to keep this video short, but I'm going to link, link this sheet in the description below so that you can check it out. What he did was he did a comparison between HDFC and Prodigy and he did a comparison between SPI and Prodigy. So right now HDFC is giving a interest rate of 11.5% or so and Prodigy is giving a 8.9% or so interest rate depending upon your case. So let's say in 2015 and 2016, you know, in total, you're taking $40,000 of loan amount. With Prodigy at the end of like, at the starting of 2017, you graduate in December, 2016, and you start off your college in 2017, you have to pay back 44,895 because you have already started accruing interest on your initial uh, $15,000 and $25,000. If you convert that in Indian rupees, it comes to like 9,61 and 16,79,000. So with 11%, you have a 30,37,000 rupees. And if you convert according to the 2017 rate of uh, 65.09, you have a 29,22,000 rupees loan. So you're already actually you're already paying less 1,15,000 rupees lesser when you're taking a loan from Prodigy because your interest rate is lower. Make sure you know that, that the interest rate is lower and that's why we are able to get this. Now, if we look at when we pay back the loan, right? Like if you're paying back in US dollars, you're paying back in 2017 this, 2018 this, 2019 this. At the end with Indian rupees, you're paying back 33 lakhs 21,000 rupees if you pay back your loan in three years and I wanted not to look in future but look in past because I know exactly what Indian rupees and US dollar conversion was so this is really interesting now again with Prodigy Finance's loan we are looking at 8.9 percent with HDFC loan we are looking at 11.5 percent so you um with like HDFC you're 
have to pay 30 000, 30 lakh 37000 rupees okay so you at the end of like 2019 when you have paid back your loan you end up paying 33 lakh 66000 so with hdfc being a higher interest rate you are paying 44490 more so it's almost looks like you know you are paying more a lot of people think like so I, I, I th somebody has made the video on US dollar INR conversion and what they are doing is they are comparing apples to apples. They are taking same interest rate and if you take a same interest rate then yes you're losing money but that's not the case here. Your interest rate is lower when you're going with Prodigy Finance so you are paying less money. He did one more nice thing. Uh, he compared SBI and Prodigy as well. He did the same maths and after all the maths all like SBI, let's say he could take took 9.3, you know, SBI is like 9.5%, let's say. And Prodigy is also 9 point some percent. So after all this maths also, the only, like, you're only paying like around $1,000 more with Prodigy Finance when you take Prodigy Finance. So that's one good thing. You know, a lot of people might think as a con, you know, US dollar INR conversion. But if you do the numbers and if you do the maths and if you pay back your loan quicker, you're not paying as much as much back or you're not losing any money. Now one con is a higher admin fee as compared to other loan options. So other loan options has like 1% or 2% uh, processing fee, but they have higher processing fees. That's 5%. You can call it processing fees. You can call it administration fee. So that's a little higher, but again, they have divided into your loan amount. So that's a good thing for sure. Now comes how to apply. You apply online, you get a code, you upload your documents, you sign your loan agreement, you receive the funds at your school. So they have tied up with a lot of schools and they have made the process really easy. You get some funds in your loan account or your bank account so that you can pay for your books, pay for your accommodation, pay for your living, and you start paying your loan after 2.5 years or 1.5 years because they also have, you know, moratorium period. That's uh, education time plus six months grace period now comes the summary let's summarize this whole video on what we talked about you know pros and cons and numbers so prodigy has been an old lender they have funded 20,000 so you don't have to worry about you know like hey this is this a new company it's a outside company and all of that it's it's a very renowned name in uh, providing funds to students who are going abroad second good thing is that they will be able to fund your 100 percent study if they are not they will tell you exactly how much they can fund right away and uh, in my sister's case i think she asked for like 67 and they were able to fund sixty thousand dollars another thing is interest rate can vary anywhere between 4.5 to 11 percent realistically i would say it's like around 8.5 to 10 percent but again link in the description go to that fill up the application get a quote within five minutes that is fourth loan offer is up to 15 years which is a great thing fifth the us dollar inr conversion is a con in a way if you're elongating your loan for a longer term but if you're paying back your loan quicker um you know it's it's not as bad as you think we have done the maths i'm gonna leave that excel sheet in the description as well Number six, admin fees is a little high as compared to other partners, but it's divided among the loan options, so it shouldn't shouldn't be too worrisome. And number seven, getting a quote is really easy, applying is really easy, and getting a loan is pretty easy. So again, even if you're considering an Indian bank, go to the link in the description, get a quote, and then decide for yourself. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. Again, all the links I mentioned will be in description. And until then, I'll see you in the next Eddie Loan series video.